Amen. Most people clap when I leave a room. <laughs> Blessing God. Amen. It's good to be with you. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you tonight, and, uh, turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter number 8. And uh, we'll look at a few verses here. And uh, some of my family's here with me. I appreciate them being here. But they may be here in the rerun tonight. <laughs> They've probably heard this before. Amen. That's all right. Uh, starting here in uh, chapter 8, Romans 8, verse 31, it says, What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against? Amen. And then we'll jump down to verse 35. And it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Yes. Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. Yes. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Yeah, amen. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, yeah. nor yeah. things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Everybody today is looking for love. Bless you, brother. And uh, for the most part, people are looking in the wrong place for love. Amen. Amen. Uh, they, they spend millions of dollars a year uh, reading about somebody else's love life and most of the books that they write on love are nothing but perversion anyway. Yeah. When they've got the greatest love book that's ever been written. Wow, amen. And it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ and His love. And He is able to give love to everybody. Yes. See, sometimes our human uh, mind and uh, the way we are, we don't love each other, Brother Byrne. I don't love you unless you love me. Bless you, brother. That's the way we are. Yeah. But the Lord Jesus Christ is not like that. His love does not have a condition on it. He is unconditional. No matter what I've ever said or done, He still loves me. That's right. Bless you, brother. And listen, he, uh, if you have this, this is the heading in my Bible. It says the believer's secure. And we are secure in this because we're secure in the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And listen, we that are believers and we can put our trust and our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are secure. Help him go. And nothing can touch us. Bless him, Lord. Listen, he starts out here, Paul, as he's writing this. And of course, we know that uh, really this is a rhetorical question. What can separate us? Or who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Well, we all know the answer to that. Absolutely nothing. Amen. Yep. Nothing can separate us from him. Amen. And some, I've heard some people and talked to some people, and I'm sure Brother Vern's run into them too. But I, I can take myself out of his love. Can't do it. Can't do it. He loves you. Amen. Just as much as He loves me that I has placed my faith in Him, He loves the sinner who has never heard about it. Right. He loves them just as much as He loves me. Bless you, brother. He was willing to go and die on a tree and to, for the sins of the whole world, the Bible says. Not mine. Not mine only, but the sins of the whole world. And the book of Romans, if you, if you study the book of Romans, especially the first few chapters, uh, you'll find there in chapter 5, scarcely for a righteous man, some would even dare to die. Amen. Listen, but for a good man, listen, but God didn't say I'm waiting for you to get good before I love you. Thank you, Lord. My favorite verse is Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God commends His love towards yes. us. And while we were yet sinners, yes. Christ died for us. Lord of God. We didn't have to get a new leaf. Amen. People always say, well, I'll just turn over a new leaf and become better. If you ever looked at a leaf and turn it over, it's just as leafy on the other side. I didn't need a new leaf, Brother Burton. I needed a new life. Hallelujah. I didn't need a religion. Religion is one of the worst things you can get. I needed a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what Paul is trying to teach us here. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Nothing can separate us. Amen. 
Now I wrote this outline down here. And uh, some things that can't separate us is our distress. Amen. Sometimes we're in distress and uh, the dictionary describes this as severe trouble or mental pain. Yeah. Sometimes uh, it, it's not as the TV uh, preachers want to say it. If you're a believer, everything's a bed of roses. It's not like that. Amen. I'd like to know what Bible they're reading. <laughs> Listen, every Christian you read about, and, and uh, the Apostle Paul especially, who wrote the book of Romans here, he went through more suffering and more trouble than about anybody. Yeah. Listen, does that mean the Lord loved, didn't love him any? Loved him less than anybody else? Oh, no. Amen. He loved him. Amen. Yes. But the, the people of the world, they, they don't understand. They say, well, uh, God can't uh, let us go through something and still love us. Yes. He loves us. Amen. That's right. A lot of times we go through things for our own benefit. Yes. God allows us to go through them so we'll grow in our faith towards Him. Amen. And we don't understand that. And, uh, some things we'll never understand until we get to heaven. Yes. But sometimes we go through distress. And uh, some people that go through destitution here, it says, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. Listen, all them things are bad right there. I don't like having tribulation placed upon me. I don't like a hard time. Listen, Amen. God don't love me any less when I go through one. Right. He loves us. And when we're persecuted, when we have people tell us that we don't want that God you're serving. We have no clue. We don't want Him. And when we're persecuted for His name, does that mean that God hates us? Oh no. He loves us. And even the Bible says here, or family, if we had to miss some meals, He would still love us. Amen. Or nakedness. If we lost everything we had, didn't have no clothes to wear, He would still love us. Amen. No Amen. matter what. Thank you, Lord. He loves us with yes. an everlasting love. Praise God. And it says here, our peril, or sword. So He loves us in our distress. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. Nothing. God. Absolutely nothing. Amen. Yeah. And listen, our, our distress and our destitution cannot separate us. But neither can the darkness. Amen. It's a dark time, and and uh, we we not went through it as much here in America as a lot of other countries. But Christians are persecuted. Yeah. If somebody tells us they don't want to go to church or they don't want to hear about Jesus, we think, oh, they they just about cut our head off. We just about got away with our life right there. Yeah. No, that's not the way it is here. Go to other countries and preach the gospel and see what happens. They will take you out and hang you in the tree. Yes. They will do all sorts of things to your family in front of you and then kill you. Yeah. But listen, does that mean that God loves them any less? Oh no. As a matter of fact, they are stronger Christians than we are. Amen. And the church thrives in persecution. That's right. No matter what, everybody, we've seen it down through time and we've read about it. One of the greatest uh, books wrote, wrote on the persecution of Christians is uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs. And read that and see that the church and all the persecution that it's ever went through didn't thrive. Yes. Men who would take Christians to be burned at the stake and throw them to the lines and different things. All of a sudden the men throw them to them and said, well you got to kill me too because I'm a believer. Because they seen the love of Christ. Amen. Amen. That's what changes the world. It's the love of Christ. It's not us uh, going on with our little tirade sometimes and saying, well, uh, the world needs more of this. No, what the world needs is the love of Christ. Amen. If they get the love of Christ, then the world will change. Amen. Let's if they see. have the love of God in their heart, they'll change. Amen. You say, how do you know that? Because I change. Amen. Yes. When the Lord Jesus Christ came into my heart, Hallelujah. He changed me. Yes. Amen, brother. Amen. He changed me. Yes. Now, I still have this flesh to contend with. 
I've still got an old nature in there that don't like what we're doing right now. Amen. It don't like to be here at church. It don't like to hear the things of God. Yes, right. It wants to do its own thing and be its own person. Yes. And we always have contention with that. Yes. Listen, the Lord Jesus still loves us. Amen. He knows we would go through all this. Praise God. He told us that we would. But He says here, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Yes. And uh, the author John Phillips wrote this. He said, The closing verses of this chapter explore all possible avenues of departure from the salvation which is in Christ Jesus, only to find every way blocked and guarded by the grace of God. Amen. And listen, that's the way it is. Amen. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Praise God. Nothing can separate us his mighty hand when He reached down Amen. in love and give us the grace of God. Yes. My pastor was preaching this morning and he, he said, I don't understand why God made human beings other than He wanted to show His creation grace. Yes. He made man knowing man would fail. That's right. Man has been a sinner in every part and aspect of the Bible. He has always been a sinner. Yes. But when the Lord Jesus... Shows grace to us. He's able to change. Amen. Love can change an individual's heart yes. and change their life. Right. And we're, we're glad of that. Amen. But uh, the distress of this world cannot change us. Our security in the love of Jesus Christ. The darkness cannot change our uh, final destination and our security in the Lord Jesus Christ. Help him God. All avenues have been blocked. Amen. And the grace of God stands in the way. Amen. And listen, as Paul is writing this here, he comes to another thing here. He says, we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. How in the world can you be more than a conqueror? It's like one writer said, uh, they went over there and they had to Peter in prison and the angel come to get him out of prison and had to wake Peter up. He was asleep. That's how you're more than a conqueror. Amen. No matter what kind of situation you find yourself in, yeah. you find yourself resting in the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And no matter what comes your way, you're going to be able to stand because the Lord Jesus is right there with you. Yes. And listen, we've all been through times and we've been through troubles, but there's never been a time when the Lord Jesus wasn't there right there with you. Amen. Yes. Sometimes we're so... Uh, Thank we you, feel like He's nowhere around us. Sometimes He's the closest that He's ever been. Yes. Sometimes we go through times when it seems like the Lord ain't talking to us. But He is. Amen. If we'll just listen. Yes. A lot of people say, well, the Lord never speaks to me. He never talks to me. Yeah. Well, you might want to open the Bible up. Amen. He might speak to you. That's right. <laughs> Amen. You might want to read His Word. Yes. This is how He speaks to us. Yes. That's right, brother. Well, I know He speaks to our hearts sometimes, but He speaks to us mostly through His Word. Yes. Amen. And listen, he, he, all He shows us is love. Amen. And everything, every avenue is blocked here, but the Apostle Paul here, as he's writing this, he comes to another thing that can't separate us from the love of God, and that is death. Yes. Death can't separate the believer. From the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. It can't separate us. 2 Corinthians 5 and 8 says, Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Mm -hmm. now listen, I believe that. Matter of fact, uh, as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, we're resting our whole eternity on what the Bible says. We're placing our faith Amen. in what the Lord Jesus Christ said about Himself. Yes. Right. Listen, I believe it. I believe every word of the Bible. I don't understand it all a lot of times. But I believe it. Amen. There's some things in there that I'll never understand yeah. until I get to heaven and we see the author face to face. Yes, Lord. Listen, he opens it up and he tells us all things about himself. Amen. And I'm of the opinion that uh, all through eternity he's going to teach us something more about himself that we've never heard of before. Amen. The Bible told us that uh, there, I believe it's in the book of John, said if the if all the miracles and stuff was wrote about the Savior, the books couldn't contain yeah. the whole world. Amen. All the books in the world couldn't contain what He's done. Bless you, brother. 
Listen, I believe He's going to teach us something about Himself all through eternity. Amen. Listen, death cannot separate us. And uh, I, I know that uh, a lot of times we, we come down and people say, well, well I fear death. But, but they know that they're saved. Yeah. Well, a lot of that is God ain't give them dying grace yet. Yeah. When He gives them dying grace, it'll be all right. Listen, I, I, know, the, I know the woman that... Uh, she was blind all of her life. And uh, her, her name was Miss Darnell. She'd been blind all of her life and had never seen at any time. She couldn't, she had Alzheimer's and she couldn't tell you the day she got saved and sometimes she couldn't tell you her name. Mm -hmm. But she knew she'd been saved. Amen. Yes. And she, she used to say, she said, well, sometimes I'm just afraid because yeah. I don't know. <laughs> And then uh, she was in the nursing home is where I met her at. And uh, before she died, the nurses was in her room. And uh, now listen, this woman never, never seen in her life. Now, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a charismatic, and I, I don't believe in signs and wonders all the time. But I believe when we come down close to dying that the Lord lets us see sometimes. He lets people that's getting ready to cross over see that. Yeah. Listen, this woman who had never seen, she told the nurses, said, look at them two men in white over there. Mm. Now, how did she know what the color white was? Been blind since birth. Never seen it. Yeah. Bless him God. Amen. The Lord let her see. Yeah. The Lord let her see. And she said, there's them men in white over there. And then she said, and there he is. <laughs> Listen, when she seen him, Amen. all them fears went away. Praise God. Listen, that dying grace, God let her head. Listen, the nurses said they couldn't explain it. They were afraid to be in the room after she said that. They left. Amen. They thought she was crazy. She wasn't crazy. Mm -hmm. Listen, the Lord let her see. That's right. And listen. One day we're going to see that. Our faith will become sight Amen. one day. Listen, death can't separate us from the love of God. Praise God. Listen, there's another thing here that he writes. I'm almost finished. But he said, I'm, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Distance can't separate us from the love of God. Amen. Amen. Sometimes, I, I already mentioned it a while ago, we feel like He's not around. Yeah. He's there. Yes. Distance can't separate us from the love of God. He loves us. Amen. Well, listen, He said that I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor power. Yes. Anybody know what that is? I think it's the Angelic beings, the fallen angels. Blessing God. They can't separate us from God. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. The devil's little workers. The demons that a lot of our world don't believe in unless they're watching a horror movie. Yeah. Then all of a sudden they believe in. Yeah. Listen, I still believe it's real. Yes. Listen, I don't fool with them. The devil is a He's the biggest adversary we got. Brother yes. Byrne already mentioned that. Right. He's the biggest enemy we got. Listen, yes. I don't fool with him. Yes. When he comes around, I go to my big brother. Amen. I call on the Lord Jesus Christ when he starts bothering me. Amen. Yes. Listen, these people that fool around with it and try to cast demons out and stuff, <laughs> I'm not doing that. A lot of them things went out with the apostles. I believe. You don't have to believe that, but that's what I believe. Listen, I don't try to cast out devils and stuff. Only the Lord can do that. Listen, the demons, the Bible says here in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now listen, we see that in our world. Every aspect of our world 
is infiltrated by demonic forces. That's right. Everything. You say, well, I don't believe that. Well, you can be wrong if you want to. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but look. Uh, our movie industry and the music industry, our political machine, if you want to call it that, Amen. everything is all linked up. Bless and God. it's all wicked and ungodly and evil. Yes. And listen, whose fault is that? Because the devil got his hand in. Yeah. Spiritual wickedness in high places. We've got men who supposedly, men of God, who come on uh, the TV and the radio and they spout blasphemy that's against the Bible. Right. How can they be spiritual? Right. They're not. Yes. It's spiritual wickedness in high places. Right. Yes. Listen, if it goes against the Bible, it's not right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yes, sir. But the Lord told me that. The Lord didn't tell you something contrary to the Word of God. Amen. 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 If it don't line up with the Word of God, you better stay away from it. Amen. But the demons cannot separate us from God's love. Oh, they try to. And uh, we're, we, we can be afflicted by them, but we can't be possessed by them as a believer. But our greatest adversary we have, the devil himself, he would like to, but Brother Bernie, he can't separate us from God's love. Amen. Amen. He wants us to be separated from God's love because yeah. then he could, he could have a foothold in our life. Yeah. But he can come by and he can afflict us and discourage us and get us away from the Word of God and he can start having an influence in our life and we can be useless mm -hmm. to the cause of Christ because of discouragement. And it happens all the time. Blessing God. Uh, we, we see it and we hear about it and we've experienced it. That he comes by and the devil whispers in our ear. That person over on the other side of the church, they don't like you. Yeah, come on. They start whispering. That's right. Listen, they don't like you. They talk about you. Who cares? Amen. I don't care if they talk about me. <laughs> Amen. That's right. That keep them off somebody else. Amen. Listen, I'm about half crazy anyway. If they want to call me crazy, Amen. I don't Amen. care. But talk about me. Listen, brother. Amen. But listen, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. 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 Nothing. That's right. No matter what you're going through tonight, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know why God had me preach this. I had something else on my heart and on my mind, and God changed it this morning. So I don't know who it's for tonight, but whatever you're going through, the Lord Jesus loves you. He's not afflicting you. Amen. He's reaching His arms out like He always has and says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you ready. That's what He's always done to mankind. Just come. Whatever you have need of, the Lord Jesus can meet. I may not be able to help you. Brother Byrne may not be able to help you. All we can do is pray for you. Listen, no matter what you're going through, the Lord Jesus Christ knows and He understands. The Bible said He was tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. That means every temptation I've ever had, He's been through it before, yet He didn't sin. But He knows and He understands why men and women go through things and why they're tempted with certain things. Listen, you ever been hungry? The Lord Jesus was hungry. His disciples was hungry. They went through a field one time and gathered ears of corn because they was about to starve to death. And the Pharisees rebuked them. Jesus didn't rebuke them. Amen. No matter what you go through, He has an answer for you. I may not have the answer. The only answer is the Lord Jesus Christ. His love, what He can do. Amen. Not Jonathan Phillips. Listen, I can't do nothing. I don't know anything. But the Lord Jesus does. Amen. Yes. You say, well, I, I'm having a problem with the, I, I, I don't know what kind of decision to make about this certain matter in my life. The Bible says if you lack wisdom, ask of the Father. Amen. Who giveth all men liberally and upbraideth not. Amen. 
Listen, I can't give you wisdom about something, but the Lord can. No matter what you're going through, the Lord Jesus loves you and He cares for you. If you have a need tonight, turn Amen. to the Lord. Amen. That's all I have on my heart. God bless you.